Hi friends, I'm going to attempt to make something on my knitting machine and I thought that some of you might be interested in following along with this project. Whether you are a machine knitter yourself or whether it's something that you've always been interested in having a deeper look into. For me myself, I'm still a baby in the machine knitting world. I've had this machine here. It's a Singer 323. I've had it for almost two years and I've only completed one actually wearable object on it. That's this shawl that you can see me wearing today. It's actually a beautiful shawl. It's a triangle shawl. I really love it. You can see the lightness of the fabric. It's really pretty and I love the color. But I obviously want to make some more things eventually on my knitting machine. And there have been a few things holding me back. I'm gonna go through all of that today. But what has prompted me to want to make this project is two things. I've been feeling a little bit down lately and one of the things that never fails to cheer me up is to make something new. It can be something new for somebody else or for myself. It doesn't really matter. Just the actual planning and making of something new especially if I'm building skills and you know becoming more confident that really helps me to get past the blues. The other thing is that here in Australia it is autumn and I'm really feeling that shift in the seasons. A lot of the days are beautiful and sunny. The evenings and the mornings are really quite cold. I was in my studio the other morning and I thought my neck is so cold. One of the things that really keeps me warm is having a warm neck and warm feet. So my project that I want to attempt is prompted by a desire to have a warm neck. And so I'm going to try and make myself a little knitted cowl. If that sounds like something interesting to you, I hope that you can join me and as we go through all the details. Hi friends, before I actually start this video, I just wanna give a little disclaimer. This is not a tutorial, this is a kind of follow me along on this project. And as far as knitting machines go, I'm very much an amateur. I've had my knitting machine for quite a while now, almost two years, but I haven't spent a whole lot of time on it and I have had a lot of problems that have been difficult to resolve. A lot of things that happened that I'm not sure why they happened. So for this video, it is a follow along project for a knitted neck cowl, but, um, but I wanted to let you know that I've left in my mistakes and because I just wanna be transparent and know a lot of you are just getting started or haven't started on your knitting machines yet. And I think it's important to keep those mistakes in because otherwise I'd be pretending that everything was going perfectly when it's not. Another little disclaimer is that sometimes when mistakes happen, I don't have enough knowledge on the knitting machine to be able to explain to you why they happened. I'm still getting to that point myself, but I hope you enjoy following along and I hope it gives you a little bit of confidence at least and some extra resources. I'm gonna pop some links down below uh, to videos that I've found helpful and resources that I've found helpful. And hopefully you can get going on your knitting machine. I tell you when it's working well, it is awesome fun. It's a really, really great craft to do. It's a really, really great skill to have. And every project that I do, even though I make mistakes, I really look forward to the future where I may even one day be able to master this machine. And I'm sure that you can do the same too. So enjoy the video. Okay, so I pointed out that I'm very much an amateur with the knitting machine, but I have a few tools and some ideas up my sleeve that I think are going to make this actually an achievable project for me. I have a bag of samples, and so I'm gonna start by having a look through the samples that I've already done previously and trying to pick out some colors or a particular pattern that really appeals to me most, and then go from there. I also have two great books that I have been poring over. One of them is the Fair Isle book. This just came out this year, and it's by Nick Corrigan. You might know her from the machine knitting community. 
great book. And the other one I just got recently is Creative Machine Knitting by Alison Depeneur. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I was a little bit overwhelmed by this book when it arrived in the mail. I thought, oh, this is way too technical for me. But what actually happens to me very frequently with all different things that I'm learning is that I might get a book and if I instantly think that it's too technical, it just takes me a little bit longer to go through it. And once I've been through it, I'm usually like, wow, this book is awesome. And that's exactly how I feel about this book now. It's so inspiring. It's so packed with information. So the difference between these two books, at least in my opinion, is say you just wanted to start out Fair Isle on your knitting machine and maybe you don't have a heap of experience on the knitting machine. This book is great because it's not too technical, but it does provide you with all the information that you need. Like there's nothing lacking in it. It's got a really simple layout with big photos and big easy to read text and all of that. So it's, it's just a great book if you're just kind of easing in. And then this book is kind of for those who are like, well, maybe I'm eased in already, but I want to do more now. And I want to know more about what I can do. And I want to get really creative with my colors and my designs and all of that kind of thing. It has a lot of text, also has a lot of photos. So although I wouldn't recommend it as a really absolute beginner book, I think that I, I know that I'm just going to get an awesome amount out of this book. It delves further into um, clothing and design and it's just got so much. I can't even tell you how much it's got. So anyway, those are the two books that I'm kind of referencing at the moment for this cow project. So in Alison's book, she has a collar, what she calls a collar, which is basically a, a cow. And in Nick's book, she also has a cow project. They're a little bit different, obviously. And so between the two of them, it's sort of giving me ideas for what I could do and helping me to get over some stumbling blocks as well. But first of all, the samples, let's have a look at those. So I've already decided that my cowl is going to be knit in Fair Isle because I'm basically obsessed with Fair Isle knitting at the moment and have been for a little while. I just find it the most captivating thing that I can do on my machine so far. So this sample, I actually knit this last week. So this is my most recent sample and it has been blocked, but it's curling over a little bit because I've had it bunched up in a bag basically. So for this one, I just did um, a few repeating colors. I was keen for this one to see how these colors look together in this design. And I do really like it, but I'm not sure if I would want this repeating pattern on the cowl. Maybe it's a little bit too simple for what I'm after. Um, the colors, I do like the colors, but I'm not sure that I would have the yellow and I'm just not sure about so much white, maybe the, the red, green and white, not sure yet. This sample I really like. Um, this one I just kept the color palette very simple, but I really love the designs on this one. So these designs, maybe not that one, I don't like that one as much. I really like it. <laughs> I should say that I really like it, but um, envisioning it on a cowl, I can envision something a bit bolder like these two. I think they would run really nicely on a cowl project. And I'm not sure about the red and gray together. I do really like them, but again, uh, for a cowl and for myself, maybe some different colors. Another sample that I did fairly recently, you can see I haven't tidied up any of my long tails or anything like that. These, yeah, I, I like them, but not for a cowl again, just not for me. I guess um, the colors as well, like the white, gray, and red. Well, I really like that, but I'm not, not to wear on myself. Here, yeah, this one was really trying out um, different designs for the punch cards that I have. So for this cowl project, I should say that I do intend to use some of the punch cards that I already have that came with my machine. 
because although I'm very, very keen to make my own punch card designs and I have everything that I need in order to start doing that, I just haven't quite got to that level yet and that, that confidence. But the books, especially Nick Corrigan's book, is really helping me with that. It has a really great section on design um, that makes it really achievable, I think. That's a nice pattern. Not the red and white. Too Christmassy, I think that's what it is. <laughs> makes it feel like Christmas. And then this is a cool one. This is probably one of the most intricate patterns that I've got on the punch cards. Um, that would be a definite contender for a cowl, I think. Again, maybe not the red. The blue's good. It's actually a hand dyed blue of mine, um, but not with the red. I would probably want something a little bit more toned down for me. I just don't wear red. So, oh, well, this shawl, you'd say, oh, look, that's red. It's not really, it's a maroon, like, or it's like a, a berry color more than a red. Doesn't show up very well on ca um, camera, unfortunately, because it is a really, really pretty color. And then the last sample that I have that I've done is this one. This would look great in a cowl too. Great design to go around the neck. That one, not so much, but this one, yeah, definitely. Um, now this one is the background color. It's the same color as my shawl. It's that berry sort of maroon color. And I do like that with the purple. It's pretty dark. It looks, looks darker on camera. Sorry, it's so difficult to represent colors properly when you are filming. So those are the ones that I have to choose from now. Just from going through them right now, this one is definitely a contender for the design. So is the zigzag. That one I was going to put aside as a no. This one, really like the two diamond designs on that one, definite contender. And the, the latest one, no, not for this one. I can imagine this as, you know, a really nice pair of socks or something like that. If I ever get to that point of making socks, which I would love to do as well. So I've got some thinking to do um, about which which design I will end up going with and um, I will get back to you when I have decided. Okay, it's this beautiful design that has won out the day. You know, it felt like such an agonizing decision. But then I was thinking to myself, it's only a cowl. It doesn't use all that much yarn. If I like the cowl that I finish, then I can make myself one in all those other designs as well. It's really not a big deal. And I've got lots of colors of yarn to try out. So yeah, this one wins the day. And this is the lovely punch card for this particular design. Let's hold them side by side. You can see there where the design comes in. I think I've got it around the wrong way, but never mind. That looks better. So that's what I'm going to start with. Now I have to choose my colors. These are the colors that I have to choose from currently. I do have some other knitting machine yarns, but they're much finer than these and I've found them difficult to work with so far. I need more practice basically. Um, so these are going to be ideal and also my machine. My machine is a standard gauge but it really leans towards liking the finer yarns a little bit more. So these yarns are an Australian three ply. This is kind of a cross between um, a lace weight and a fingering weight. And in some countries, there's no real equivalent to this weight, but it's not quite as fine as a lace weight and it's not quite as heavy as a fingering weight. Now the colors that I'm thinking of using, I actually just got this one and this one very recently. I've slowly been building my stash and buying one or two cones at a time. They are pretty expensive, but you do get a lot of yarn on them. But some, some of my favorite color combinations are green and purple. So I'm gonna pop them side by side and put that one away and 
Okay, as soon as I put them side by side, I love them. It's like they were just meant to be together. So in Knitting Fair Isle, you do two colors per row, basically. And you have, and you feed both colors into the yarn feeder at the same time. And then the machine automatically knits them in that sequence of color for as long as you decide to leave it like that. You can always swap the colors out or change them over or whatever. But that's really great because um, some other punch cards you have to like swap the colors over, um, change them and that's, that's a pain. That's one thing I really like about Fair Isle is putting the two colors together and I'm just gonna knit those colors for as long as I want to. So I don't wanna do anything too fancy with this cowl. I don't want to, for example, I really, really love Fair Isle that is a lot of different colors. But for this particular project, because I'm still learning and still gaining confidence, I am just gonna to stick to the basics. Now these cones, as I said, they're three ply classic wool. Okay, they're wool and they're from Bendigo Woolen Mills. Okay, here's my next dilemma or thing that I have to figure out and decide on what I'm going to do. I can't decide on whether to knit the cowl lengthways or widthways. I'll try to explain what I mean by that. So when you look at my sample, you can see I cast on the stitches across the top here. And so it was quite a thin sample. And then I, as I knit, it knits straight down like this. That gives me, for this design, it gives me an upright design. So the design is standing up straight. And so if you imagine it on a cowl, if you imagine it, it goes right around my neck, then if I knit in that direction, then it means that the design is going to be the correct direction. If I decide to knit it the other way, so what I could do is knit it kind of sideways like this. So it would go around like this. Well, I don't know, that would still look good. The reason that I'm deliberating over it is that one direction the cow is gonna be longer and one direction it's gonna be shorter. And so I'm trying to decide, do I wanna make the cow long so that the design is upright and it's gonna go long and sit around my neck that way? That would mean for, I'd need more needles engaged on the flatbed. And that would mean, so for me, because of the level that I'm at, I would be doing an e-wrap cast on, which takes a little while, and then I would be doing a latch tool cast off. There are different cast offs that you can do with something like a cowl that's much faster. I've tried another method, but it didn't go very well. Um, the main thing for me was that the stitches are really small and I just found it really hard to see and to manipulate. Probably if you're a more experienced knitter, you, you have a better understanding of the stitches and where they should all be laying and everything. You could do that quite easily. I found that too difficult. So my idea was to do an e-wrap cast on, which would give me a cast off edge um, as I knit on that edge. And then when I get to the end to do the latch tool cast off, because I'm a little bit practiced at that and I like the edge that it gives, that would give me two clean edges to finish up with. Then I would take the piece off the knitting machine and then I would do like a mattress stitch or something to join them up rather than trying to join them up on the machine, which hasn't gone well for me before. Not to say that I'll never do it, but just that I'm not quite ready for that yet. So if I'm talking about um, knitting it, knitting it at a greater distance across so that the design sits upright on me, that just means more casting on and casting off. And that does take a little while. I don't know that I'm particularly fussed about it. I don't mind spending a little bit of time here at the machine. But if I knit it in the other way so that it goes across, then I might have a, a different length. So I need to decide which way I'm going to knit it, whether I want the design to be upright or whether I'm not fussed. 
and just looking at how it looks draped on me you know what I think I'm really not fussed whether the design is upright or whether it's sideways I think it looks good both ways what do you think hard to decide but that's another decision that I have to make before I start because I need to decide how many needles I'm going to be using before I can start casting on I've made a decision sometimes it's just better not to overthink things too much so what I've done is I've decided on 110 stitches and just to give you an idea of the measurement of that it is almost 50 centimeters wide which is let's flip it over and see what the inches are because I do not know my inch to centimeter conversions it's just over 19 not quite 19 and a half inches so my next job is to cast on my stitches and I've decided to use purple as my main color which means it's going to go in the yarn feeder number one or a and so I'm going to get that set up with the machine and then I will look at doing my e cast on so I'm going to thread up my main yarn first these yarn cones are really nice and sturdy so I can just sit that underneath the first yarn feeder bring it up through the hole up and around the tension dial and I just pull that out a little bit to make sure that it sits right inside the dial then I'm coming through this eye right here and then bringing down one of these strange looking antenna things which is actually a tensioning part of the, the machine I thread through there and then I thread through this other hole and then I can just use this clip right here to hold it for me while I get other things organized I don't need to worry about my second color yet but I'm going to just put it there next to the purple so that it's ready for when I start knitting the fair isle I've got my yarn threaded into the yarn feeder and I'm just going to start on the left hand side pulling the needle out and the e-wrap cast on is called e-wrap because you are literally doing like an e so you start out with a tail of yarn give it a good couple of inches and I'm just going to put that underneath the needle so it goes underneath and then it goes over to the left and back and so now you've got your tail on the left and you've got your working yarn on the right and with the tail I just like to tuck it there's a little um, clamp underneath clamping the machine to the table and I just like to stick it in there so that it, it's held somewhere and then we can pull out the next needle and we're going to do the same thing it just gets wound around left and then back to right and then pull out the next needle and so you can get quite fast at this the challenge is like this to try not to get it hooked on the next needle I need to take that back I think yeah and um, also actually what I'm going to do is just get these needles out of the way because they're, they're just a bother and then that way you can just take out one needle at a time as you're going to use it I'll do that for all of my needles but at the other end with my needles I'm going to leave the last needle down as my marker for where to go to so I don't have to count out all those needles again okay so here we go again um, that one is already wrapped so we'll pull out the next one and it's handy to hold the yarn underneath so it doesn't slip forward and then just wrap that around next one forward wrap that around it's actually pretty simple and you can get really fast at it after a little while you just want the yarn to be sitting at the back of the needle there against the sinker posts because that's going to hold the yarn in place if you have it down here then you're messing around with the latches and everything and it's going to go into the wrong place so if you are looking for a tutorial on e-wrap cast on because I don't have all that much experience um, there is a better tutorial from Helen at the knitting school 
I will link to her video down below and that video is where I learned to do this cast on and it's really good actually all of Helen's videos are really good okay so I'm going to continue doing my cast on right to the other side and then we'll go on with the next step all my ear wraps are done so now I'm going to use a casting comb now from what I understand people don't typically use um, casting on combs with a singer they're more of a brother machine thing but I bought one because I heard that you know it gives a better even tension when you're casting on and doing those first couple of rows of stitches and that was something that I was having issues with um, stitches popping off needles and all that fun kind of stuff so I got the cast on comb and it does really really help with this piece that I'm doing now the cowl the casting comb the casting on comb is not quite the right width it's just a few needles short on either side I'm going to still use it but I'll have to see how that goes because um, with my last sample using my casting on comb knitting fair isle the casting on comb was quite a bit wider than the actual sample so I'm just going to try and um, get it fairly even and hang it on those stitches it's a little bit tricky to position it correctly just making sure I'm getting all the stitches and then for the stitches at the edges that don't have that the casting on comb doesn't reach then I'm going to use um, the regular claw weights for and I bought extra of these claw weights when I bought the machine really glad that I did because the machine came with three or four claw weights but I really needed more so uh, okay on this side as well hmm I'm gonna hold that uh, last thread the working yarn out of the way okay then I'm going to grab my needle pusher and just push all of my needles back into working position and I'm just going to do it gradually just so that I don't get any nasty surprises <laughs> So the working position on this machine is the B position. Okay, I think that'll do. And then I'm going to make sure that on my machine I have everything set up to knit, uh, making sure that the settings are not on other stitches like Farrah. I don't want to knit Farrah yet. I want to get a couple of rows of stockinette in first. So I'm going to double check that with my book that came with my machine and just really be sure that I'm set up for knitting. I'm pretty sure that I reset it last time I used it so it was back to stock in that stitch. But it always pays to recheck because I've just spent all that time doing the e-wrap cast on manually and you know I want things to go smoothly from here so it's worth double checking so yep seven side levers are on yep Russell levers yep so yeah everything is good to go for stocking that stitch so I'm going to take my first row across really slowly oh and I almost forgot I'm going to put a couple of extra weights on the casting on comb for extra security just to make sure that they're being weighed down properly okay here we go wish me luck we're going to go slowly across that was tougher than it should have been I noticed part of the way across that um, my stockinette stitch dial it wasn't quite clicked exactly onto it so it's almost like it was in between settings that wasn't good 
and then also I've got a loop of yarn at the other end here so I'm not exactly sure what happened there something got caught up where it shouldn't have been I think but I'm going to try try to keep on from here and see how we go so I'm going to knit back again and that feels so much better that's how it should feel at this point so um, I do have some loopiness at the very edge here but I feel like that's just a bit of loose yarn so and I, I think I can probably stitch that in as I go so I think it'll be okay I'm gonna do a couple more rows Okay, all good. The um, stitches are looking nice. There's a tiny bit of loopiness on that one too. I think it got a little bit put off by the fact that I had the claw weights on the edges um, instead of the casting comb. So, um, so I think I'm okay to progress onto the Fair Isle now. 